Can you even trade during the holidays like Thanksgiving and Christmas? Sure you can. Depends on what you're trading, what you're going for, and how much preparation you do ahead of your trading time. So if you're new here, I'm Hima Reddy. I use price action like candlesticks, momentum, my R side power zones down below, and market timing or forecasting to boost my trading and that of my tribes. And I'm going to give you an inside look here at how I'm here trading the Monday before Thanksgiving. So what you would normally expect to be a slow week or a slow day, no opportunities. Here's how I collected $500 on the E-mini S&P 500 futures in less than 30 minutes. So I'm going to just move through my charts, all right? I'm not going to talk through every single annotation because A, I don't know your level of education with me, and so I don't know which of those you'll resonate with. Obviously, if you've studied everything I have to put out there, what I'm sharing will make sense in terms of the annotations. I will talk through the trades specifically, okay? So here's my weekly chart of E-mini S&P 500 futures, and I do take a quick glance at the weekly chart first thing in the morning. Here's my daily chart. It has a lot more going on, all right? So again, I have a combination of price analysis, RSI power zones observations, and forecasting tools on here. Now, overall, from my weekend analysis, I had a strong suspicion based on the charts that this market would move up further this week. I also incorporated views from other markets. So let me show you those. Here is the VIX, the volatility index. And looking at it through last Friday, okay, so this current red bar wasn't in motion, I saw the tilt of the VIX and I saw there was room for it to go lower. I also saw the tilt of the 10-year yield and I saw there was room for it to go lower to this 43.33 on the TNX.X. So really important here, guys, I'm using other markets outside of my main market to help me make sure that I'm not missing some key feature, okay? All right. So let's come back now to that daily chart. And from the daily, we go to the 60 minute. Now, this specific 60 minute chart is not the exact same report that goes in my scanning of the markets. What I put into my scanning of the markets report for the E-mini S&P has a lot of this, all right? But then I step away from the analysis, I come back and I do it even more in depth. So some of the things I added were key levels on individual candlesticks and what those told me, in addition to a trend line here that you can see, what all of this told me is that there was a good chance we were going to pause around the middle of the 9 a.m. bar, so 4527.13, rounded up to 4527.25, all right, and trade higher from there. That was my main thesis, again, based on the evidence, not a bias, not a, you know, sense. The analysis was telling me that that was likely. So I analyze first on a weekly, daily, and 60 minute, but my trading incorporates two much smaller time frames. Here's the first one, a three minute chart, each candlestick representing one period of three minutes of price action. That's it. Three minutes, boom, next candle. All right. So if we come into the time right before the market open, 9.27 a.m., I went ahead and went long at that level that I identified on the 60 minute chart, 4527.25. Now you can see here that if you went long there, you would have not been at the optimal entry. So the optimal entry was the middle of this doji candle, which is also a price probe. And that was another opportunity to go long. Okay, so let's see what the middle of that bar was. And that was precisely 4524.38 market came to exactly that level, the closest tick, all right? So this was the optimal entry. That's not exactly where I got long, but where I got long, a little bit higher, I sort of lived through this pullback and I was able to capitalize on the trade. Now, I didn't just trade off of the three minute chart. As many of my students know, over the past year now, almost a year and a half actually, I have been working on being able to trade even faster time frames, faster time frames than I have ever traded before. And I am currently now in a 15 second chart of the E mini S&P. So you might wonder, what the heck does that feel like, Hema? Well, let me show you. So to do this, I'm gonna scroll back in time to the market open and kind of take you on the journey with me. All right, here we are on the 15 second chart. Now I have turned on a feature called chart trading. So if you right click in TradeStation on the blank screen, you can see it here. And as I unfold what actually happened, you're going to see the trades that I made, all right? 
So as I had mentioned, coming into the market open, I saw that support down below, 4527.25 as an area to buy. So I'm gonna just throw a line down on there so you can have it in your um, vision here instead of having to imagine it with me, okay? 4527.25, let's move the label out of the way. So by the time I got to the charts, it was about here, it had come back, it had moved above, but I said, hey, I'm gonna put an order to act at that same level on an assumption that if we retest it, we'll hold it. So you can see I got filled here, okay? This was about 9.28 a.m. Yes, that's before the market opened. This is not for everybody, okay? If you have rules that work for you to trade later in the day or to wait till after 10 a.m., do what works for you. But I have been doing this for a long time and I'm comfortable trading. It's really specific, but I can put a trade on after 9.24 a.m. Eastern. That's my rule, okay? All right, so we went long here. I went long. And then, oh no, oh no, right? I was watching this and I was like, dang it, I don't think I got the best entry. But I knew that there was this support down below, this doji, right? So that's where I calculated and all I saw was, okay, the market didn't stop at this old top and that 60 minute midpoint. It came back into this price probe, no biggie. I lived through it. I didn't do anything. I didn't touch the computer. I just watched because I had a stop on. I have a protective stop on that was four points away. So I knew I had room to survive the trade down to here. Okay, so I'm gonna put a line to represent my stop. Four, five, three, three. Or sorry, four, five, two, three, point two, five. Okay, four points away from my entry. And then the market started dropping even further on the open. So this was 9.30 and I was like, okay, am I gonna be stopped out or what? But I have to accept the risk, right? I lived through it. Now my stop here is what's called a money stop, meaning it just automatically plots at four points. You can see that that low was actually the low of the doji price probe. And guess what happened here? Everything started really surging up higher. There was a nice bull bear RSI face off here in the bear support power zone that supported that this down move would be over. I was already long. So even though I had an inclination to add more shares here, I knew that that would technically be adding to a losing position, so I didn't do it, okay? But the fact that I got that idea gave me more confidence to stick with my original long idea. So now let's look, and I'm just gonna space out the bars. Let's look at what unfolded. Traded higher, traded higher, and it really took off. So I got out at my original target for my first contract, which is two points away from my entry. I've just built this in, it works really well for me. So trading two contracts, I get out at the first contract at two ES points, which is $100, and then I raise the stop of the remaining contract to a maximum loss of $100. Therefore, I become break even on the trade. There's no way I can lose money except for a tiny bit on commissions, right? That gives me a lot of peace of mind to be able to manage the trade. All right, so I'm gonna again expand the bar so it's easier to observe the trade management. So you can see market continued higher. And here I was still long another contract and all I did was watch what was happening and use my rules of trade management to monitor. So after I saw this platform here start to form, I moved the stop to beneath that, okay? So where I'm block putting this black line Actually, I use the red line. Where I'm putting this red line represents the protective stop order anchor, but not the actual order. Okay, the actual order was two ticks below. But I'm following the price action, letting the market take me out. It still wants to keep going. Okay, I'm going to stay long. Still wants to keep going. Okay, I was monitoring all these bars, yes, on a 15 second chart, so they form fast. Monitoring this, as soon as this formed, I raise my stop to beneath that level. Monitoring this, raise my stop to beneath here. It just kept riding the wave. Now you might ask, well, why didn't you add to your long position, Hema? Because I'm trading within the context of this 60 minute chart. That's my big picture view. And I knew that there was resistance at 4534.88. And so I didn't really want to be trading so close to that. I didn't know if that would hold temporarily or permanently, but I had that lined up, all right? 
So I just kept riding. So now you can see we came into that 4534.88. It was finally at that area. I have it in my plan that I could have gotten out here to maximize my profit, but I went ahead and just trailed my stop per up, my two bar method. That's a GAN style of trailing stop. And that got me out here. So you can see that the second contract took me out here. So even though it's hard to see here, guys, the first exit was the distance between this buy and this sell, okay? Then the second order was the distance from this buy entry here all the way up to this sell exit. Then from there, market can start to go lower. All right. So I took a stretch. I got it from my computer, walked around for a minute because once I complete a winning trade, my goal that I'm trying to make is $1,000. I was almost halfway there. I just want to kind of chill out for a minute. So then I come back and then I saw this. I saw that we were starting to form a double top and the market was hanging out at this 4537. It wasn't able to get above it. When I looked at that on the three minute chart back here, okay, this was the time back here, I saw a room to go short. So I took a low risk short entry here. Okay, after the confirmation of this at least temporary 4537 high, RSI power zone is not able to climb above. Okay, it's not a bull bear RSI face off on its own. This is more of an advanced application of looking at RSI compared to double and triple top patterns and more. All right, then from there, got out the first contract at two points so I could lower my other stop to break uh, two points max, which would make the trade overall break even, right? But then I started to notice, mm, all the RSI power zones are doing in the 15 second chart is coming back to bull support. I don't think looking at the 60 minute chart that this midpoint of this price high is gonna hold. So I recalibrated and I started lowering my stop based off of the action here. And I got out of the second contract with a tiny loss. So I still made some profit overall on this second trade. But what this second trade told me was, hey, the market's resuming higher. Now I had collected half of my goal and I really don't enjoy trading past the first half hour of trading. So I let it I let it sit and you can see the market is continuing. It did continue higher from there. So absolutely there are other opportunities, right? But I just want to show you here, guys, a real life example of, you know, this isn't only when there's market moving news or a nice, healthy, regular five day work week. These things happen all the time, even in a slow holiday week. So I have realized the value you get from doing these. I'm going to still continue to do my short, you know, quick update videos on other markets, but I'm going to bring more of this to you. And please, please let me know if this is what you want. So you must go ahead, especially if you're watching this on YouTube, put a comment in below. Tell me what you found value in from this video, a golden nugget takeaway that you had, because this is a current market example, but the lessons here can live on. Please like this video if you found value in it and you want to see more like it. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And you know what? I know traders have friends, so share this video with another trader that you think would benefit from seeing a lesson like this come to life. Now, everything I've shared here, all right, I teach. So let me show you how you can find that. All right, here we are at hemaready.com forward slash portal. This is where my most of my products are currently housed. and. I just want to fill you in on what you could dive into if you want to learn more of what I talked about. So in this video, I talked about concepts from the RSI power zone system, the bull bear RSI face face off ebook and specifically four zones RSI coverage system course. All right. That's the first pathway of learning with me. So I highly recommend you take advantage of that. I also talked about and displayed. I didn't really discuss them, but there were GAN candlestick patterns and again, trading patterns, techniques deployed on the chart you saw today. I'm always considering forecasting, but I didn't have a specific forecast to show you in this particular video, but it's definitely part of my uh, longer term charts. It wasn't on the 15 or three minute and all of the key price levels that you saw me talk about start with me writing the skinny in the markets report that's on E-mini S&P 500 futures. So if you are trading E-mini S&P 500 futures, 
or even if you're trading the SPY or the micro ES, you got to get the skinny on the markets, man. This is me sharing my 23 plus years of trading this market and having a sense for it that nobody else does. I also include NASDAQ reports a couple times a week as well as stock picks. So there you have it. I thought I'd be real clear on in this particular video what courses I pulled from. And my courses are like slices of or layers of a cake, guys, all right? If you dive into one, it's gonna be awesome and delicious and help you in your trading. And when you're ready to add in that other layer of techniques, it's absolutely there and available for you. Now, I do put things on sale and on promotion so you don't have to pay the sticker price. So you gotta keep opening my emails, paying attention to my messages and notifications so you can get the best possible price for anything. And I happen to be recording this ahead of Black Friday 2023. As I mentioned, it's Thanksgiving week. One of these guys that you see here is going on a massive sale this week. I, I, I can't believe I even did it, but my team convinced me that this is what you need. And when I thought about the pathway of learning, yes, absolutely. So one of the courses here is getting a major discount this week. So keep an eye on your emails and I'll catch you there. If you're watching this at any point in the future, I hope you got valuable lessons from this video specific to trading when there's quieter market action, trading in a holiday week, looking at multiple time frames and more. Again, leave those comments down below and I will personally check them out. Catch you next time.